Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Hot Corner. I'm your host, Brandon McGowan, and I'm joined here today by Harrison Durr and Otto Gomez. Uh, well, we already talked about the flurry of moves that have happened around the league during the offseason, uh, but in your opinion, guys, what was the biggest offseason move made by any team? Uh, Otto, we'll start with you. Um, I think the free agent signing of Pablo Sandoval by yeah. the Boston Red Sox was a huge move. The Red Sox, like we were talking about before, they went from last to first to last in the division the last three years. And I think they're going to go back to first with this move. Um, they, de they definitely need a lot more hitting. Pablo provides more hitting throughout the season, constant, solid play at defense. You know, he'll start for you at their base. He doesn't have to DH. But more importantly, as he's proven in the past with the Giants, he can hit in the postseason. And that's what matters in the American League. they got to get past solid teams like the Tigers or the Angels. And um, Pablo is going to help them. Um, with his hot hitting during the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, he's not the only big move they made. Obviously, uh, Hanley Ramirez. Right. And the you know, the now best young... left fielder in the league, according to MLB Network. <laughs> exactly. He's never played a game out right. there. But, so but they did, call him BS they did that. have They did kind of have a hole at third base. Uh, they got rid of Will Middlebrooks. Uh, right. now what they about Brock a... Holt, though? Yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's a good utility player, but I think, you know, a set guy at third. Super Sandoval, utility player, I call him. Sandoval is, is, is the, yeah, the best guy on the market. An upgrade, definitely so, an upgrade. Definitely an upgrade. Yeah. yeah. For, For anybody, really. Exactly. What about you? Who's, who's I big considered move? saying Pablo, but I kind of got turned off by the fact that his weight is, again, being in question. Yeah. It seems that's like that's every... bad lighting. Every that's bad lighting. <laughs> bad lighting. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're, the not, getting, they're not getting as good angle. Um... But no, it's, this is now the third time we're doing this after winning a World Series championship. Wow, Pablo Sandoval, you put on like 20 pounds during the uh, the offseason. And then, of course, the next year, after not making the playoffs with the Giants, he loses like 15 yeah, pounds. Yeah. But no, we're in this part of the cycle, and they're saying up to 30 to 40 pounds now because, let's be real, three World Series titles in five years. Um, he got a huge contract, uh, millions of dollars for five years. I'd probably order steak for dinner too. Yeah, maybe get, where's maybe the get motivation, a, right? Yeah, maybe hey, get a cannoli if he for dessert. If he, uh, fine, if he's overweight this year, then he'll lose the weight next year. They'll win next year. No, I, I agree. But anyway, <laughs> it's five years. Right? My my, yeah, actual, my guy? actual guy is uh, former Red Sox John Lester. You know, when the Cubs started their off season by signing Joe Madden, I was like, all right, that's a cool move. I like it. But I don't know your biggest move to be a manager. That's yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, not on the field. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So the fact that they signed John Lester away from huge contenders like the Boston Red Sox. Um, the San Francisco Giants, the LA Dodgers, I guess the Oakland A's and Atlanta Braves to some extent. Regardless, those are all really good teams. Yeah. And the fact the Cubs were able to do it shows their commitment to winning, shows how great their front office truly is, shows that Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer are loyal mm -hmm. to those uh, they have worked with in the past. Right. And I just really appreciate that. I think Lester's going to be a great ace on that team. Because he's not just a great you know, player during the regular season, but they're hoping to get to the, the playoffs. And he's proven himself in the playoffs. I, so that, it's a huge yeah, move I think they'll contend for the wild card this year. I don't see them actually getting in, but I definitely think in 2016 they'll be in the playoffs. Yeah. They got a bunch of good guys, good young guys. Too, Just like the Mets. Out. The oh, Mets and man. Cubs could be the face in the NL in the yeah. next five to ten that's years. That's very hard to think. And the Padres, which is absurd to think. Hard to oh, imagine. Man. But all right, speaking about big moves, uh, let's move on to the Washington Nationals. They now look like one of the best teams in baseball, from the starting pitching to their lineup. But should they trade away any of their players, considering the fact that the guys like Zimmerman, Fister, Ian Desmond, Denard Span, they're all free agents after this season. Right. So do you, you think they should keep all the guys and, and go for it all, or maybe try and look towards the future? Harrison? Okay, they have to keep these guys. They already messed up in this regard in 2012 by saying, oh, we'll win 98 games every year. We'll, let's shut down Steven Strasburg. Yeah. We'll be fine in the playoffs. Clearly they weren't. Um, Gio Gonzalez was erratic. Their other starters didn't really show up. And then Drew Storen, like, got mental trauma from yeah. that meltdown in that game five but what I'm saying is they got to go for it this year I like how they focus on the long term but you need a World Series title as well so the short term should also be a factor yeah. and let's be real they're not going to be able to bring back Fister, Zimmerman, Desmond and Span. and I understand that especially with the signing of Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is going to be the ace probably with Steven Strasburg now so I say you go for it this year. If some reason by July they're not in playoff contention, which would absolutely, I think, blow all of absolutely. our minds at this point, um, then you trade them. But I think you have to go for the World Series this year. Well, I completely agree. But yeah, what you want? They're definitely in the position to go for it now. Yeah. It's not, and it's not even like should we or should we not. They're definitely in a position that they have to do it. Yeah. The starting pitching is they can is, win 100 so games cool. this year. Right, exactly. Easily. The starting pitching is fantastic. Yeah, arguably the best in baseball. Yeah, their and offense is a little weak currently though. He's already worth in span or dealing with some injuries, and they're kind of starting to see how vulnerable that lineup yeah. could be. Right. Yeah, as long as they have a fairly decent start in the beginning, those guys will come back and they'll yeah. be fine. No, but, yeah, 
Yeah, and if they trade those division. guys, what offense do they have? Yeah. You know, they need they need offense. Um, like you said, I'd I'd be very surprised if they're not going for it all in in July. Or like if they're not like contention ready mm -hmm. in July, they might make yeah, another I think move. Everyone will. Yeah, if they make one or two moves with those guys to like maybe you know set up, but trading all those guys. I think if anything, they'll get a bet during. Yeah, trade deadline as they season. should, as they should. But it, they it's need. hard to want to trade, you know, these guys and because, you know, you want to yeah. go for it all, you want to win, especially when you have such a good team like this. They're stacked. But, but say yeah. they don't win, you know, the World Series this uh, this year and then they lose at least, let's say, three of these guys, their window, it almost yeah, looks closed then. No, I wouldn't say their window's no, closing. No, not with, with, not with the starting No, pitch. I mean, they pitching. just signed Scherzer. They're going right. to probably Strasburg keep Strasburg. I think... Yeah, but you lose Zimmerman, you, you might, you know, you could probably bring back Fister yeah, a little bit. You still got Bryce Harper becoming a better player. Uh, here. He's 22 years old. Yeah, I'm a little worried about Harper, but no. Desmond, I think, will You're probably, probably not stay. Probably him, yeah. They can't afford his contract. Span, you know, he's getting old. I think, if anything, they'll keep either Fister or Jordan Zimmerman. I think they'll keep one of the four. Probably Fister. Zimmerman's going to come in a big payday. Yeah, I mean, you got you to gotta remember, like, Harper's also 22. I mean, this is his year to really get it together. Yeah, they yeah. have Anthony Rondone, who's really coming yeah. into his own. Um, I don't know too much about their farm system, but I trust I trust Mike Rizzo a lot with this team because he's done some really cool things the last yeah. four or five seasons. Well, if Ryan Zimmerman can get it going on offense, yeah, uh, and he'll play then, um, first base this yeah, year with exactly. Adam Roach so, departing. You know, we don't have to worry about the errors over there at third oh base. Oh my God, he used to be such a great defender, and then all of a sudden he like. He didn't even sidearm the ball. He would, like, submarine the ball it at was, first base. Yeah. And you you felt like an error was going to happen every single time. Yeah, and, and players aren't afraid to sign there anymore. Yeah. As you saw by Scherzer, they know that this is a place to be. Good yeah. atmosphere, good baseball team, good yeah, baseball Yeah, fans, fans are now yeah. right. it. And, it's a cool uh, ballpark, actually. There's a lot of absolutely. energy at, the, at that Yeah, stadium. it looks like a new age team. And people aren't yeah. gonna, are, are going to want to sign there, even if they lose some players. Yeah. So they shouldn't be afraid. All right, and lastly, let's move on to the Yankees. And surprisingly, we're not going to talk about A-Rod. Oh, uh, man. I, I love talking about A-Rod. He's my favorite. I know. But this past week, uh, GM Brian Cashman came out and said that he doesn't think the Yankees should ever have another captain after Derek Jeter. Uh, so this, you know, begs the question... Should the Yankees have another captain in the future? And does baseball even need captains anymore? Harrison? Um, all right, so for the first part of that question, I definitely think Derek Jeter should be the last captain for the Yankees. I think it would be an insult for anyone else to that's, be captain. So, but 50 years from now, you just still let Derek Jeter, Jeter be the last is going to be like the face of New York for like the next century. I mean, that's can you really good. think of anyone else who's going to not only like almost match his level but surpass it? I can't. Think about the captains who have been on the Yankees. I'll just name two. Thurman Munson and Derek Jeter. You don't really get many characters and ball players and just great overall personalities like that, especially in New York. There's, you think A-Rod's going to be captain now? I mean, no, let's be real here. I'm I mean, not saying, I'm not saying the first people future, but I'm saying thing. maybe 10, 15 years from now. I still don't see it. I think they'll honor Derek Jeter. His nickname is The Captain. Are they really going to take that away from him? Well, like you said, they had Thurman Munson. And back then in the, in the late 70s, nobody would have ever thought that they were going to have somebody better or the same as Thurman Munson to be a captain. And lo and but behold, you got Willie Randolph, you got Derek Don Jeter's Mattingly. One out of a Even million. Don Mattingly right after. Nobody thought anybody could be a captain after Don Mattingly. And then Derek Jeter comes along. So you never know what's going to come along True, but later on. The second part of this question, I think captains are dying in baseball. You don't even have the C on the jerseys. No, I, that's David, my favorite part of being a captain, yeah, just so you can see it. Yeah, David Wright elected not to have the C. I don't think Paul Canerco had it when he was captain. Right. And not every team has one. The Phillies no. don't have one. Uh, you don't need to have Veritek one. Veritek was one for yeah. the he, he did have the C. He, he, he was one of the few that well had deserved. the Cs. But well deserved. I, I'd like to see the captain position or title, whatever you want to call it, uh, make a little bit more prominence in the MLB, but I don't think it's going to. So if players aren't even going to wear the C and completely honor it, then I think we should just get rid of it I don't entirely. think you, you even need it. As long as you have veteran players who just take I think the you leadership should. role. Yeah. Why not? Football, in the NFL and NHL, you have the C. And but you the, can have, NHL, but you have but the A, too. You know, it's, like, it's not everywhere. You know, you see it in football, in, in hockey, but like in basketball, you don't see it. Yeah, That's another thing. Say you have, you, have one, one captain. captain. Like, now let's go to David Wright. David Wright is the captain of the Mets. Correct. Now, captain America. <laughs> yeah, Captain America. But, but you know, he's he should be the captain of... Just the you know just the the position players. How is he going to be you know a leader or the captain for the pitchers? Why not? I, 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 I mean, he can be an outspoken leader, but if they're talking about a team, it's, it's not NFL here. There's only 25 players on a team. It's not that much to handle. Yeah, but position players and, and pitchers yeah, they're completely different in, in the spec of right, how they go but, about their business. Yeah, and they don't even hang out together. You know, exactly. ones are in the bullpen, one side of the dugout, the other. Yeah, but I mean, you're all in the same clubhouse, and when it comes to crunch time or there's controversy and it's closed door meetings, then the captain needs to step up and address the entire team. Team. Right, so you need so one. I think you need a guy like David Wright or Derek Jeter or Jason Veritek, etc. Like players of this caliber who have the outgoing personality, 
but can be serious when they need to be, like David Wright was with Noah Syngard when he was skipping his bullpen session yeah, for, was, for uh, lunchtime. That was a good, a good move by you know him trying to get him the young guy. That's in that's line. what a captain should do. Yeah. And um, I guess he's a little annoyed that it got leaked. I don't blame him. It is a story, but you know things like that prove why a captain can be necessary and show off that title. You're not going to be arrogant about it. You should let yeah. your players know and let your opponents know, because they might not, that you're the captain in the face of this franchise. Exactly. exactly. Like you're saying, if you need it, then there's no reason to completely suspend it from the Yankees, because what are you going to have in 10 years from now? The person you're looking up to is a player who's 50 years old or retired 10 years ago? No, I think you need yeah. you need to stop living in the past. Not not that, like, I'd agree with that, that if, bad if thing. the captain yeah. was more and, and I, don't think, I don't think, just to wrap things up, I don't think Cashman has the authority to make the final decision. I think it comes down to right. the ownership. Yeah, it's and should be. And players, too, because yeah. that's what, what exactly. you're encompassing. But yeah. it is something to keep an eye on in the, uh, you know, the next decade or so to see if, if it changes. Um, but all right, that'll do it for our first segment. But after the break, we'll get into our rapid-fire round. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the Hot Corner. It's now time for our rapid fire segment. Harrison, we're going to start with you. How much is the Hunter Pence injury going to impact the Giants? It's going to impact them a lot, and I expect them to get off to a very slow start, especially with Pablo Sandoval, as Otto talked about, leaving San Francisco for the Red Sox. Um, it's just it's going to put so much pressure on Buster Posey and Brandon Belt and uh, Brandon Crawford. You know, Angel Pecan's coming back from an injury as well, so you don't know what to get from him. And I think teams are honestly just going to pitch around Buster Posey now that you don't have Sandoval and Pence for the time being. So I expect teams like the Padres and Dodgers to get off to a much quicker start than the Giants. Yeah, I mean, it's not even going to affect them uh, just on offense, but defense too. I mean, he plays every single day at the red field, and now Aoki has to come and fill in. And that, that you know, red field... Uh, corner out it's there not and, easy and, at all. it can be difficult so it's gonna be an adjustment yeah for I him, remember Ichiro got a uh, inside the park home run there yeah during the all anything game. that hits off the the brick facade yeah. up there Ken it, Griffey Jr. tried to play and he exactly. looked like an idiot yeah it's a fair game all right but Otto for your first question uh what do you expect <clears> from Bryce Harper this year um I'm a little biased because Bryce Harper has been one of my favorite players since I first heard about him I thought this guy was going to be the next big thing and um, lo and behold, Mike Trout takes that title right away from him in that same yeah. draft. <laughs> but um, I think I think this year he's going to stay healthy. I think um, he'll be able to uh, be a much better consistent player this year. I think his power numbers will go up. I think he'll start stealing a couple more bases. I think he'll be he'll start to become really a more Mike Trout type of th type of player. He needs some protection though. He like, does. Trout he does. Has pool holes, and uh, I don't want to say Hamilton, but had Howie right. Kendrick. Right. No. 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 And I know like we were talking about before. Um, they shouldn't get rid of those free agents because that'll make Bryce Harper's job a lot more harder, a lot harder. Definitely. But um, yeah, I definitely Harper, expect him to play at least 150 games. I hope so. And yeah. uh, he's going to be a big part of yeah, the. Yeah, Harper of the team. was hitting like six by the end of the last yeah, season. Yeah, that's not so, good. Yeah, that's a bad sign. Definitely, definitely yeah. a lot more potential. All right, and uh, Harrison, for your second question, with the uh, the huge injuries uh, to you, Darvish and Jerks and Profar, they're going to miss the entire season. Uh, not a good start for the the Rangers, who wanted to get uh, off to a, a good start from their horrible year last year. Yeah. Is it time for the Rangers to clean house? I just want to say I called this. Uh, yeah. We talked about it on our radio show a few weeks ago, and you had a lot of prominence for them. I said they have so many question marks, and already it's been like three weeks, and they've lost their top prospect, and they've lost their top ace. And not just an ace, he is a star of the MLB. Yeah. Like, I think we all should be disappointed that you, Darvish, is not going to – to play this season. He's, he's a treat to watch. But anyway, I think the Rangers should clean house. It's going to be very difficult with the huge, massive contracts of um, not even Adrian Beltre, but um, Prince Fielder and <laughs> Sissy Chu. That's going to be you're going to have to eat a lot of money with that. But it's also it's tough for the easy. starting pitchers. They have all the guys, you know, Harrison Holland and even Martin Perez signed up, you know, locked up yeah. for these multi-year contracts. All it's coming hard back to get from injuries. These contracts. Yeah, exactly. but it's just, I don't see a future of this team right yeah, now. No. It's very, very muddy. I think they should clean house, but it's definitely going to be difficult. It's also a morale, like, destroyer. You know, your best guy goes down. Yeah. For the, yeah. Whole, for the whole locker top room. prospect within right. weeks right, of each right, other. Right, right. Yeah, GM, yeah. GM morale goes down, everything. everything yeah, it's going gonna, gonna to be tough yeah. for John Daniels. Sure. But Otto, for your second question, uh, we all know the excitement surrounding the Cubs this uh, this coming year. But uh, in reality, when are they really going to hit their potential? Um, I think Harrison talked about it before. Maybe not, the, probably not this year. Probably yeah, not this I year. Agree. These guys are really young. Uh, John Lester in his first year, so it's going to take him a while. But definitely in the next two to five years, which I know is saying a lot, but these guys are really young. Um, the Cubs are going to get there. The Cubs have been working really hard. The UFC really knows what he's doing. Proven track record and over Hoare there in Boston. Boston. Right, exactly. Joe Matt, right. And uh, I think they're new guys. Uh, Salar, 
Um, Baez. Ri- right, Baez. Rizzo. These guys are Russell. like killing. Right. Addison Russell. They're killing, and, and they got Texas Fowler around the center. These great guys. Move to right. Miguel Montero. Exactly. Great, These guys have been move. killing yeah. in spring training. You know, we just named off yeah, they were, six yesterday, guys. Yesterday, yeah. you know, Soler, Bryant, and uh, Baez went back to back to back home that. runs. Right. Awesome. They're, they're excited for these guys right. for the future in Chicago. And. It's it might exciting. not be this year. They, I, I think they'll probably, probably contend, won't. but next two years, they're definitely going to be It's like a Royals type of thing. The Royals' yes. main guys weren't that good the yeah. first, like, two, three years in the majors, but then, you know, you'll see it last year. Exactly. Yeah. I love Baez, too. He reminds me so much of Vladimir yeah. Guerrero. He's got to cut down the strikeouts, though. Agreed. So. Uh, before your final question, Harrison, uh, which starting pitcher should the Mets trade to uh, improve their ball club? <laughs> um, I think in terms of most value, Nice would get the most back because he's a lefty. Right. Uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. the injury bug is a little bit of a factor there, but I'm still going to go with Nice because just because I love Bartolo, but he's he's so old. He, it's statistically proven he throws fastballs 85% of the time. And mm-hmm. Dylan G, you know, not many teams know about him. And I, I do like G, but I just think Nice could definitely bring the most trade value. Unfortunately, the Mets don't have too many lefties, even with all their starting mm-hmm. pitchers currently and their prospects. So I think... They're going to trade G, but it probably should be Nice. Yeah. It's definitely good. worth putting on the trade block just to see what can happen. Yeah, because, exactly. uh, the, I mean. Now the Blue Jays can just start and pitch up. They lost. Yeah, Strong exactly. The Rangers, so. as we just talked about, yeah. with you, Darvish, going down. Right. You can, as, as we all know, you can never have too much starting pitching. The Mets have plenty, yeah. as of now. I mean, finally, for your final question, Otto, we all know about the new pace of play rules <laughs> uh, instituted for this upcoming season. Yeah. But do we really need to make the game of baseball faster? Um, that's, that's a very tough question because when you change some things, it makes the game worse in some aspects. Um, when players take their time, you get their maximum potential. Like you let a pitcher give it a couple more seconds so he can think, he can know what to do. That's, that's really big and it makes the game better. It makes, and, and when players take a lot of pitches, it makes everybody work that much more. And that's great for the game. But um, this is f- like uh, a big complaint in baseball, obviously, is people watching it from their houses. Yeah. You know, that Especially it, it national take, broadcast right, commercials. It takes, it, takes, it takes a long time, right, and you have all the ads and stuff. I don't really know if it needs to get that much faster, but um, the rules, I think, will be enough yeah. to to get the game to at least. Experiment. I agree. If they stay here and they, they don't go too too extreme, I think this this would be good. It's yeah. mainly for the, for the casual fans to get more people involved. Yeah. The casual fan yeah. watching does find it more. And, yeah, that, and that's who baseball wants to get exactly. involved. Exactly. Every casual fan I talk to is like, I love going to games, but right. I lose interest watching yeah. them. And it just it's the same old and song it, and dance every time. It's understandable. Uh, but that'll do it for our rapid fire uh, segment. Uh, after the break, we'll wrap things up with coming at you. Stay with us. Oh, welcome back. It's now time for coming at you. Uh, these two are going to ask each other a question made up on the spot, and have about a minute to respond. Otto, we'll start with you. What's your question for Harrison? All right, Harrison, um, how do you feel about the Mets starting rotation? Come back. Uh, you got Oof. Harvey. You got um, Syndergaard. You I'm have. Impressed if you, know, if you can Phil name Wheeler. them all. No, I mean. <laughs> oh, well, and G, Dylan G and John Neese. Your five guys. Cologne, don't feel, forget Cologne. Oh, and Cologne. Okay. That's right. The best player. DeGrom. Yeah. You didn't even. All right. So this is what. It, it's a lot. Mainly the Mets rotation. Back. It's actually it's overwhelming, but. <laughs> What I think is going to happen, I think DeGrom will get one, Harvey will get two, Wheeler will get three, um, Nice will get four, Cologne will get five, Dylan G will be the odd man out, but we also still have Rafael Montero and Noah Syndergaard. So what I want to happen, I want Rafael Montero to go to the bullpen right. because Henry Mejia used to be a starter. Yeah. was good, but not great. He's become a very good uh, bullpen piece, and I think Rafael Montero can do the same. Syngard, it's interesting. I think it's actually good for him to start in the minors. He didn't have the best year in AAA. He led uh, the AAA league in strikeouts, but... He had about a high ERA, about 4.6. 4.6 ERA, so he still needs a little work. Maybe pitch more to contact and strikeouts this season. So, you know, if a guy like John Neese, who clearly he gets hurt a lot, uh, goes down, or Harvey needs a couple of week, right. weeks of a break, I think that's when Syngard will come up probably in June or July. It's, it's never bad to have that much death. Yeah, no, never the Mets' wrong. death, I think, is arguably up there with the Nationals in terms of just, you know, if, if we have an injury or two, we'll still be all right. Yeah. All right, that's and your exciting. question, question about him? Um, all right, stick with the theme of pitching here, but I think a little bit less excitement on your end. How do you feel about the Yankees' starting rotation right uh, now? The opposite of how you feel. We don't have that much depth. We have... Tanaka, who's our guy, but then, you know... Could chose, get hurt. He didn't do the surgery. Yeah, chose not to have the surgery, so we'll see how that goes. Um, some guys do it. Most guys do it, and it's proven to be a very successful surgery, um, but some guys don't, so we'll see how that goes. We got CeCe, who came into camp a little overweight. Good. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's good, good for you. Good, from 290 to 320, so that's 
Um, He's probably back on the Captain Crunch. Yeah, seriously. Oh, not like a couple bowls a day. Um, but and then and then let's Nova. see who else. Nova and then you got Pineda in the back. Nova's but, come back from injury as yeah, well. Yeah, no, exactly. You got guys come back from injury. Guys coming into spring training not fully, not fully in shape. So Pineda's got his pine tar. Right. We got. He's got. He's got pine and tar. Pineda also over his has body. injury history. He missed yeah, like two exactly. years. Right. So we just named four guys that we have no certainty over what's going to happen. Cece coming off his la off a really bad year because he's tired. He's been the workhorse right. and been very successful previous years. So we really, I, I, I really have no idea. I don't know why what, you guys trade yeah. Sh uh, Shane Green to the, to no, the Tigers. It is going to be I mean, a lot thank of you for doing marks. that. I, yeah. I have very high expectations for Shane Green, but yeah. I think he would have been a great piece for that Yankees Just rotation. Health, health, health is going to play a huge part in, in the Yankees' success. And if, and if they're not pitching. healthy, what do we do? You know, we got to look exactly. to the bullpen, look to younger guys who we wouldn't want to uh, make bring trades up. right now. Exactly. exactly, trades and and we do. And the Yankees have been known to make their biggest moves in the offseason, like free agent signings. Yeah, and that's two years you, ago, right? Yeah. And that's not some, something you can do uh, during the middle of the season. If we don't, if we're not doing well in the middle of the season, there's not really a lot. We, we can do to, to help our, yeah. our ball club. Might here. be another long year for the right. Yankees. And, and a good year for the Mets. It's Mediocre like 1986 year. all yeah. over again. Yeah. Oh. Going back to the 80s. Uh, well, that'll do it for another episode of The Hot Corner. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, if you're interested in joining LTV, like us on Facebook or email us at ltv at For Harrison Durr and Otto Gomez, I'm Brandon McGowan. Have a good one.